Well, thank you very much, Rajul. Uh, I am going to speak uh, on social exclusion, agriculture and nutrition linkages, consideration for some inclusive policy. Uh, given the time constraint, I will hit on the issue. Uh, one of the, uh, we, are, we are really trying to get insight into a problem of persistently high malnutrition that several countries pay, face today. One of the characteristics of the problem is the unusually high level of malnutrition among certain social and cultural groups in many countries. In several of these countries, although the average level of malnutrition is relatively high, but its magnitude is particularly high among certain social, cultural, and other groups compared to the rest of the population. And in several of these uh, countries, malnutrition is particularly high among the persons belonging to groups distinguished by race, color, social origin like caste in India, ethnic group, indigenous people, uh, religious group, and of course the women, and territorial region as well. Why the level of malnutrition is high among the social group compared with the rest of the population, and what policies it will require is the issue that I will discuss with you within a remaining time. Well, friends, what I will argue is that the factors that cause poverty and malnutrition are similar to both the group, that is the social group as well as the rest of them. But the channel of causation that aggravates and induces high malnutrition for the person belonging to social group is somewhat different. The malnourished person from certain social and cultural groups suffer from social exclusion and discrimination. The processes through which they are excluded from having an equal access to sources of income, employment, education, public health service, another factor. Thus, in addition to the general economic factor, it is the unfair exclusion from access to opportunity through market and non-market transaction, and possibly unfair inclusion, but with a discriminatory treatment which cause a additional and aggravated malnutrition among this community. Therefore, I will argue and provide some evidence from India, because I am comfortable with that data, it is not that there are no data available for other countries. There are a large number of countries which have data and social group. But I will pick up India and make my point at the end. Why do I take India? There are two reasons. One is that there, is a, uh, there are multiple social groups in India. We have social group uh, based on caste. We have indigenous people, what we call settled tribe. We began to recognize the problem of religious minorities. And of course, we began much earlier the problem, uh, recognize the problem of women. So four multiple groups which, will, which provide us data and disparity in the in malnutrition level and provide uh, uh, certain uh, food for thought. I first provide the inequalities quickly. I am not showing too many tables. Mm. I'm not successful, okay. Uh, can you help me? Anyway, the, if you look at the data in India and take income group, the National Family Planning Health Survey for 2005 provides the malnutrition rate that is underweight children by mass index for women and men as well as for uh, children. Uh, then what you discover is uh, that there are significant disparities in the underweight children, if you take children and if you take biomass index, uh, that also vary considerably across the social group. Now this table is a very interesting table. It gives you social group like scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, other backward caste and the rest, uh, cross classified by religion, Hindu, Muslim, other religious group like Christian and Sikhs. And what you get is the following, that the malnutrition level, whichever indicator you take, children or men, is unusually high among the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe, which are discriminated group and recognized by Indian government, compared to others, uh, and whichever religion you take for that matter. Second is that the, the, uh, the malnutrition level among the Hindus and the Muslim is lower compared to the religious minorities. Third point that emerged quickly uh, is is that uh, between men and women, women lags behind uh, in some of the uh, important indicators, but particularly the biomass. Now, this, this, this is the statistic that brings out intergroup social disparities. The issue is why and what policies are required. 
uh, we used in the, I, I particularly use the general descriptive statistic. I would not show it. It is in the paper which is circulated in the Andy seminar. And also the logit regression and try to discover as to why, what are the group specific factors that cause a higher level of malnutrition among the social group as compared to others. I think the two things come out quite clearly. One, that there are general factors that cause malnutrition and poverty perhaps among all the poor and deprived group. We took uh, the monthly per capita expenditure as a proxy for income, poverty levels, and the wealth index. There are several aspects of wealth index. And what we discover is that the, 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 the income, poverty, and wealth index is closely related to the level of malnutrition. As well as uh, we took uh, farm income, income of the farmer and income of the farm wage laborer. And you see a clear linkages that lower the monthly per capita expenditure, higher the malnutrition level, higher the poverty. But beside the income variables and beside the asset variable, you have education being played a major role. Uh, illiterate are more prone to a high level of malnutrition. And also the health family Frank survey data gives a good statistic on access to public health services and it come down, comes out quite clearly that these social groups, shadow caste, shadow tribes have a less access to the various public health services compared to the rest of the population. Similarly, mother's education and the status of health of mother plays an important role in the child's health as such. So there are, these are the general factors that are very, very important. Uh, let me just repeat the income, access to asset, education, access to public health services, and status of mother for children is important. But the, the logistic regression also brings out the fact that if you control all this factor, uh, and yet you discover that the, the, there are unexplained part with respect to scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and religious minorities. And this brings out quite clearly that if you control the fa other factors and take only the social background, then the, the odds and the difficulties faced by the children belonging to the minority groups or social group is much higher. Uh, the deprivation level, malnutrition level is still higher. Uh, the logistic reg regression, what does it take is that it homogenizes all the characteristics and only try to see the impact of the social background. And it comes out quite clearly that there is a lot of unexplained variation in case of child. There is a lot of unexplained variation in case of uh, woman and men belonging to certain social group. In fact, the difference between the scheduled caste and the other children is to the tune of 7.4%, and for SC adult, it is about 3%. Uh, I would like to just mention quickly that the children are a lot more vulnerable to discrimination and exclusion than the adult, and between the adults, women are a lot more uh, susceptible to the discrimination than the men. Let me come to the last part now. How, what policies should we have? Not that we don't have policies, but I think there is a, there is, there is a uh, certain amount of bypass as, as far as the group-specific policies are concerned. I, I believe that the policies that are continuing uh, should continue, namely that the general factors, general uh, factors of providing income earning asset, increasing the employment and earning of the poor, particularly of the small farmer, in the agriculture is very, very necessary because the, the highest uh, malnutrition rate is for the, some of the group which are poorest. And it is their income need to be increased. They depend on farm and any development in agriculture through productivity or employment or wage earning is going to help them. Agriculture has a key role to play to reduce the malnutrition of the farmer, particularly small farmer and farm wage laborer. Similarly, the education level is equally important. Providing good access to the public health sector is equally important. But coming to the group specific policies and the messages that we get from this result is that while the general policies are necessary for everybody, the discriminated group as well as the rest of the others, uh, we will have to have, and we, we in many of the countries they have taken, special measures which are group-specific measures, and those group-specific measures are the measures uh, which target some of the social groups, but also develop policies and strategies which overcome the discrimination and provide them equal access, which other enjoy. 
Uh, I do not know the policies taken in many of the countries, but in India has take, taken a several lead, and they have uh, affirmative action policies for the women, for the men belonging to this social group. Why do I say that the, we do require and group specific policies? The research done by us in our institute indicate that we have taken three studies. The discrimination in education, discrimination in nutrition scheme, midday meal scheme, uh, the integrated child development scheme and public distribution scheme. The study comes with, an obs uh, with, a, with a result that the children and the women and the men belonging to this group have a discriminatory access. The utilization level and access level is relatively low compared to the other, partly because of denial, partly because of discriminatory treatment. Therefore, the socially excluded group, either by social origin or by race, or by color, or by gender, or ethnicity, or indigenous nature, you do require this additional policies in addition to the general policies that we, uh, we, we, we discuss and we are going, we, we, we provide it because they face all kind of exclusion and we do not know the nature of it. In fact, this is one of the areas where we should promote uh, research because this question should knock out our head. Why is it that the malnutrition level, whichever indicator you take, is at least 20 to 30 percent higher than the rest of the population? I think, friend, these are some of the uh, points that I wanted to share with you. Large majority of the countries, I would not like to name them. The countries are named uh, in, the, in the circulated paper. Uh, countries in Asia, it is China, India, Philippines, Japan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and several countries in Africa have developed good specific policies, but we do need to understand uh, what is the big knowledge gap is that we do not know the forms of discrimination clearly. We do not know the consequences of those discrimination and exclusion on their health and access to um, services and other things. If we have clear picture, we can also suggest the policies. Well, thank you very much.